My name is Tom Laturco with EDP Renewables, here to talk about Moria Offshore Renewables. And basically, I want to give you a bit of a background in terms of who we are. Uh, EDP is a Portuguese-based, global, vertically integrated utility. You can see we're the fourth largest producer of wind energy in the world, present in 13 countries in both electricity and gas. And uh, you can see some of our installed capacity estimates as well as the number of employees. So we're a large industrial group that uh, has made a large splash into renewables. And specifically, one of the growth platforms for EDP renewable or for EDP is EDP renewables. Specifically, we've got two major platforms: one in North America and one in Europe. Europe is based in Madrid, uh, and it also includes the Brazilian platform as well. UK is within that uh, that platform as well, and we focus purely on offshore wind in the UK. And uh, you can see just a little bit about the EBITDA numbers, just about a billion and 145 million in net profit in 2013. So it's a company that's ready to make large capex investments, specifically associated with offshore wind. Okay, in terms of our partnering strategy in offshore wind, we've got two major partnerships. One's with Repsol Nuevas Energias. Most of you are familiar with them, and uh, we partner with two projects in Scotland. In addition, we partner with GDF Suez for the French bid. Uh, that we should know the outcome over the next week or two, but there are two projects with a total capacity of about 1,000 megawatts in that, in that area. Um, so going back to the Scottish collaboration in terms of our work with uh, Repsol Nuevas Energias, we've got the Mori Firth project and the Inchgate project. So Moral <coughs> is the one we'll talk about a little bit more today. That's round three, zone one and it's a project that's just received consent. Uh, and so therefore, there's a necessary switch in our focus in terms of how we're moving forward with the project. Uh, the Inchcape project is led by Repsol, but we also have a 49% stake, and that's a Scottish Territorial Waters project. We're hoping that that one will come out of the consent process very soon. And we're running a number of joint procurement exercises. So some of what I will talk about today will also be applicable to Inchcape as well. So um, the opportunity is not only just the Moray project, but also the Inchicate project in the, in the uh, very short uh, time period. We'll shift back to Moray here in terms of a project overview. As we said, we're very delighted that 1,116 megawatts have been consented in the eastern development area, which is actually the, well, just to show you, it's the colored area in the east here. Um, Although we have over 1,000 megawatts consented, the first opportunity, the first project that we will bring forward to FID, and we'll talk about the timescales in a minute, will be 500 megawatts. And we're taking advantage of the water depths in that eastern development area of 35 to 48 meters, which is really part of the shallower area on the Smith Bank. The turbines that we'll use will be of novel technology. We're talking about larger turbines here, very large rotor diameters. And one thing that we show here is that there's an AC grid connection. We've migrated the grid connection over the last year through a process called COIN. Uh, and essentially what this has enabled us to do is to take DC out of the mix. It's going to be an AC connection. It's going to be tried and true technology. And there's an opportunity for cost reduction just in that change by itself. In addition, we take out some of the program risk because AC um, technology is much more available today, although We'll hear a little bit more from Siemens T&D today about uh, some of their upcoming uh, technology, I'm sure. Uh, DevX, we've spent in development expenditure uh, just over 30 million on the project, and this year is a very capital intensive year. Uh, we're planning on spending 15 million pounds on geophysical, geotechnical, installing an offshore MET mast, and uh, running some feed studies as well. So very, very capital intense year, meaning that we are putting the effort in to bring this to FID. 2014 is a critical year for Moray Offshore Renewables. And why do we believe in the project? One reason is that I don't have to tell anybody here that it's the wind screams up in the north of Scotland. Most of our P50 estimates are greater than 4,000 net equivalent hours, which you can see there, which is a, a very fantastic resource. And uh, our company operates over 8.5 gigawatts of wind worldwide. This would put it right up there at the top. Okay, don't want to focus too much of the detail of this slide, but this is essentially the program to final investment decision. And we'll talk about procurement programs in just a little bit, so I uh, don't have to feverishly take notes here. Uh, the key thing that I want to talk about here is remuneration certainty. You can see the line there. 
that is the CFD award process, and that's what we're hoping to have by the end of the year, and it's absolutely critical to push us forward to FID. And we'll talk about some of the conditions precedent to that in just a minute. Um, we haven't shown the full build program because, uh, as Alan can tell you in a little bit more detail, the final secondary legislation with DEC is yet to be approved. It will be approved this summer, and some of the phasing uh, issues will come out of that. Therefore, we expect that the 500 megawatts that will be the first project to FID will either come in, let's say, two 250 uh, megawatt phases over two years, or in a single phase of 500 megawatts. And we are looking at some of the construction programming tasks and we'll be working with the supply chain in the bid process to understand what is most achievable and what's most economic and efficient, okay? Okay, so going to the contracting uh, packaging strategy. Um, we wanna go over this in, in some detail here, uh, but make a, a few specific points. So right now, we're looking for EPCI, we say like vertically integrated type scopes, um, for six different packages. So wind turbines, substructures, medium voltage cabling, offshore substation platform, export cable, and onshore works, okay? And it's very key to understand that this is how we're approaching the market, and we'll, we'll on the next slide, discuss how that's done. But the packages, we expect, may be further consolidated as we go through the tendering process. And this is important because some of the information that we're getting back from financial entities is that you must reduce the number of interfaces. And therefore, we're looking, as you can see, we have a number of interfaces there. Interfaces are risk. And so we're looking to consolidate in order to reduce that risk. Okay. Timelines. Okay, so we'll go right down those packages. Turbines, I think everyone here is aware that uh, we've shortlisted two turbine suppliers, and we expect to designate one of those as a turbine preferred supplier this summer. Um, as I talked about, our CapEx deployment this year, very important. Survey campaigns, we have uh, one geophysical vessel in the water right now, another one's going out next week, and we'll also have a uh, geotechnical vessel in the water in May, meaning that we're spending the money in order to get the geotechnical information. We already have 20 boreholes, but we're getting additional information to characterize that ground model so that we can move forward and, um, and, and go through the feed process, the front end engineering design, process and then move to FID with detailed design, okay? Uh, substructures, we have two concepts that are in our, in our substructures envelope. Uh, Gravity-based structures and also steel jackets. Right now, we are in what's called the pre-qualification questionnaire phase and you'll see this term PQQ on the next couple slides. What that means is we are going out to the market right now and we will be going out to the market for some of the other bits to understand how for EPCI packages, the supply chain is going to organize itself. Will it be through JVs? Will it be through consortia? Will it be one major contractor taking on the supply chain? So one of the messages from today's event is that we can't just look at our tier one suppliers. We must look down the supply chain and we must understand where we can get good competitive supply chains developed, okay? F for substructure specifically, we will uh, then start a formal RFP, probably four suppliers, maybe five suppliers, and then we'll shortlist at the end of 2014, and in the first half of 2015, we'll run with that shortlist in anticipation of a award in the middle of 2015. That gives us six months prior to FID to work out all of the uh, information that we need to share with banks and uh, have executable contracts on the back end of the FID process. Okay, moving to the electrical, um, design. You can see that we're defining our clients requirements right now uh, moving forward with an electrical designer. So this is basically to understand where are the uh, synergies between each of the uh, components that you see there. Um, and then just more or less the timescales are congruent with the others. In the PQQ process, uh, none of these have actually gone out yet. So the opportunity is 100% open uh, we want to know for EPCI how this is going to be organized. As we say, there may be some consolidation due to the synergies between the packages, but then we'll run that two-stage process with a short list in between, as we talked about in the last slide. Okay? Again, leaving the time for FID uh, preparation here so that we can have executable contracts. Okay. Um, I don't think that I um, contradict anything that you said before here, so... Hopefully it's all in support. 
this is our take on uh, supply chain plan submission. It's extremely important. We have designated one of our very senior people internally to EDPR to lead this. His name is Enrique Alvarez Uria. He will be here tomorrow. Uh, well, he'll be in Inverness tomorrow and also in WIC on uh, Thursday. In, in addition, our offshore procurement lead is Oscar Diaz. And so we'll circulate those uh, contacts. Those are the people, and in, in, in also including myself, that you need to be in touch with over the next uh, couple months to really start this PQQ process and start the formal uh, RFP processes. So why is a supply chain plan needed? From our view, it's a pass or fail. This is a conditions precedent to being eligible to apply for a CFD. So the CFD application will be in October 2014. In August 2014, we need to apply, okay? The first guidance was issued in October, two in October 2013, rather, um, and there were three key criteria, skills, competition, and innovation, which um, Alan has gone into some detail on, and um, certainly it should be relatively uh, self-explanatory. However, there's been additional uh, guidance that's published about a week ago. And uh, so we know August 2nd is the date that it's expected that supply chain plans will be accepted. We know that 30 pages will be the level of detail that we'll be able to put up front, but there are unlimited appendices, and so we can go to some detail as long as it's referenced in the text a little bit later in the, in the document. Um, our message here, uh, and I think this is absolutely congruent <coughs> with what you said, cost reduction is extremely important. We need to bring costs out of this industry, and we think that with the pipeline that you've seen that EDPR and Repsol have with our partners, we think that we can do that through joint procurement processes, maintaining skills, competition, and you can see that with turbines and with some of our other uh, substructure concepts, we're looking for an innovative approach. And that we also think that UK content is very important. We wanna know who's able to do certain parts of the, the EPCI scopes that, we, uh, have, that we'll be putting out there. And so, as we say, it's not just for us to say, well, okay, we looked at the EPCI scopes, we looked at our uh, tier one suppliers, and that's all we know. You know, we have to look down into the supply chain. We need to get to know as many of you as we can, and we need to understand what you can bring to the table so that we can put it in our supply chain plan and follow through on it. And so today and tomorrow, I think, and also Thursday, will be not only days just for meet and greets, but I think really investigative conversations to understand really where we can work together. And I'll go to my last slide here. Um, just a matrix in terms of how we view the supply chain submissions and how we value some of the requirements, okay? And I think these will be circulated, these presentations. Um, one thing that I'd mention, Alan, you mentioned the uh, offshore wind investment organization and the work streams that we see are turbines, substations, towers, foundations, and export cables. And you can see that, I'll come over here, that this is also how we're looking at our supply chain plan and how we're valuing or evaluating each of those uh, components as well. And so there are, like we said, there's a great opportunity here. EDP Renewables, Repsol on the Moray project and also the Inchcape project. We, we have some challenges over the next year. We need to be successful in the CFD process. It's absolutely critical so we can bring investment to Scotland and the UK as a whole. Um, but we need all of your help, and we need to get to know of you. Uh, get to know you, and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled that the turnout is as it is today. So, thank you very much.